Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create Vessier curves just like this one using MATLAB. I won't go into the math behind it, I'm going to leave links for videos that I think do a very good job explaining what they are and the derivation of, of the equations in the description of this video. Basically what they are is just a curve made based on control points and the curve doesn't necessarily cross these control points as you can see here point 0.1 and point 0.2, they, are just, they just influence the behavior of the curve. So if you want the curve to trend towards this direction, uh, up, you add control points in that direction. So that's basically what they are. They are going to be built with basis functions. I'm going to assume that you also know what basis functions are, but they go from zero to one vertically and horizontally. And the interesting thing about them is that whatever point you choose on the horizontal axis, the summation of all the intersections with the line is going to be always equal to one at any point. If you scroll down, you will see the general formula of the Bessier curves. This looks very, very strange because it involves the summation and what the hell this, this is, but it's easier than, than what it looks. Bessier curve is going to be divided in segments and these segments are going to go between control points. So between the first one and the second one, there's going to be one segment. If you do that for all the control points, where you're going to end is with one less segment than the number of control points. So for, let's say, five control points, you're going to have four segments, and you're going to add them all four here. Now, the sum goes from i is equal to zero to n. i is going to be the index in this case, which is going to go from the very first control point, which is, here is term zero, to n, which is the last number of control points. This parenthesis with, with n and i is going to be calculated this way. It's very easy. So it's basically going to be the number of control points factorial, so n factorial over i, which is the current index factorial 2 times n minus 1 and that factorial. And as I said before, it's going to be a constant for this equation. Then we're going to have the basis function, which is this whole term here, which is, you can see it's a function of t, and t is going to be between 0, uh, a value between 0 and 1, and, we're going to, and t is going to be a vector. So we're going to calculate these segments in terms of t. And you can see that they are uh, their exponents is n minus one and then i and then p is just going to be the x, y, and z values for the or control points. We will be using the these three equations right here. The, all the changes is you can see that they replace the binomial coefficients and the basis function with a uh, function b, lowercase b, which is the same thing. It's just to simplify it, but we'll be calculating b first and then we will be solving everything else. That's what we're going to do in our script. So let's go to MATLAB. So the very first thing is to specify the variables. We're going to have three variables, well, five, but three of them is just x, y, and z, which are, consider them the same variable. So the first one is going to be in number of control points, and we're going to start with three. Then we're going to specify the number of points we have in the curve in total from first point to last control point and I'm going to call the function endpoints I a hundred points but I am going to specify as 0 0.01 then we're going to specify the values for x y and c so next we're going to specify the x y and c values they are going to we're going to create a vector and I'm going to do with the rand function which is going to create a number of uh, a random number of values so here I specify how many rows I want one row but I want the number of items in this row is going to be equal to the number of uh, control points. Paste it three times, change this for y and this for c. We can, and let's go ahead and plot this. Okay, so plotting this here, you can see the three points. All right, there's not much to them. Yeah, if, you, if you run this again, you're going to get random points. So next, we're going to specify a value for n, and n is going to be the number of segments. So remember that the number, of, uh, the number of segments is always going to be one less than the number of control points. Then we're going to speci uh, specify the index i, which is going to go from zero to n. Then we're going to specify the binomial coefficient, which I'm going to call like that. That is going to be factorial of n over factorial i times factorial of n minus i. Let's see if I wrote that correctly. No, I didn't. Oh, because these are vectors. Okay, so I need to add this, mm. and maybe here too. Okay, all right. So you need to add a point when you are dividing and, and multiplying vectors, but I remember that. So you can see that the coefficients here are one to one. So if we run this again and get new points, we're go still going to get the same values. Now, if you go to Wikipedia, you open the page for binomial coefficient. Here you can see 
uh, this image, which is going to be the coefficients for the, depending on the number of control points. So for the first one, it's going to be one. For two points, you're going to get one and one. For three points, which is what we have, we're going to get one, two, one. For let's say one, two, three, four, five, we're going to get one, four, six, four, one. Let's go to MATLAB and check. So five. And yeah, you can see one, four, six, four, one. All right, so this is working. Change it to three. And finally, let's create the vector for t. So it's going to be zero, two, one. And the number of divisions are going to be specified by spacing, which is the number of points that we created before. And that should give us 100 points. Now let's go ahead and calculate the Bernstein basis polynomials. We're going to do that with a for loop because we're going to do this uh, by the number of control points we have, one for each control point. So 4j is equal to 1 to the number of control points. So b is going to be, and we're going to store them in rows. So j is going to be the row number and then whatever number of columns we have is going to be equal to. And if you look at the equation, it's going to be that coefficient we calculated before times t to the power of i, sorry, i, and then the index is going to be j2 times 1 minus t, which is the basis function. It is also going to have a power of n minus i index j, and I think that's it. Okay, so if I wrote this correctly, then we can plot them. Those uh, polynomial functions, and they are going to basically be the basis functions, so they should look something like what we have on Wikipedia. Let's see? Yeah, so here you can see they go from 0 to 1 in both horizontal and vertical axis, and if you take any point, let's say here, you can see that the y value is 0.25, so you have for the uh, yellow line and the blue line is 0.25, so it's going to be, you add them too, so it's going to be 0.5. For this one, the intersection would be 0.5, so 0.5 plus 0.5 is going to be 1. So perfectly, we have the basis functions done. Now we can start creating the final vector that is going to contain the, the Bezier curves for x, y, and z. So I'm going to call it x Bezier, and it's going to start with 0. It's going to be one row and the number of columns is going to be equal to the number of values in t, the number of items, items in t. So we're going to have 101 values, right? Do the same for y and z, and create another for that will go from 1 to, again, the number of control points. Here, we're going to redefine the, that x Bezier vector, which is going to be equal to the basis function at that specific uh, iteration times whatever the value for the control point is for the uh, that iteration plus whatever we had before the the for the Bezier curve and then we can just copy this and do it do the same thing three more times just changing these for y and this for c y oh, come on c y no y and c okay let's run this check that everything's okay everything's okay and then we're going to plot this i'm using plot 3 because it's a 3d <laughs> curve right specifying the x y and z values because i want to have the control points in the figure uh they are going to be circular markers and they're going to be painted black in the same figure i'm going to have uh, the Bezier curve in color red so yeah you can see there yeah you can see that it works this is a starting point endpoint and is influenced by the other control points. Let's try with more control points, let's see. What about five? Yeah, when you have many points, they start, they stop making a lot of sense. They, they stop being so uh, useful. So yeah, I hope that this video was helpful to you and I'm not the best at explaining math. So I'm also going to be leaving a link in the description of this video for uh, help for the Ukrainians fighting for their country. Um, I know that this is not the biggest channel, but if I can help in some, in any sort of way, I'm going to do it. So make sure to check that as well.